This week we're going to be shooting still life photos in the studio. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace, where you will learn innovative techniques on shooting a wide range of photography. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, today we're going to be talking about some still life photography in the spirit of Edward Weston or Victor Schrager. And the reason for this is, you know, this is something I normally don't shoot, but unfortunately, a couple weeks ago, I was in a spectacular bicycle crash. I was riding my bicycle and went over the handlebars and hit the ground, and I actually fractured my spine in a couple of places. And so I have a body cast on and I can't really move around. And so this is going to allow me to just sort of slow down in the studio and shoot some stuff that doesn't require a lot of movement. And so uh, I'm looking forward to that challenge for the next few weeks. Now what we have here is we're going to shoot some vegetables and so uh, I have some cabbage that's right here and I've got some other things that we'll be shooting a little bit later. But what I want to show you is the setup that we're going to be using. And what we're looking for here with these setups is, you know, uh, a cabbage, a, a head of cabbage isn't something that's really glamorous. But what we're trying to accomplish here is to capture form and light and shadows and highlights and midtones and things like that. So it's more of an exercise in creating uh, form out of something that's static. Now the nice thing about cabbage, it's got a lot of texture to it and so do bell peppers and things like that. So we'll be shooting those. Now what I want to show you is this setup. Now what I have here is I have this um, duvetine background. And what duvetine is, it's a cloth that really absorbs light, sort of like velvet. The difference is it can work a little bit better with uh, higher temperature lights. And so I recommend that. Duvetine really absorbs light. And so I want an absolutely ba uh, black background. So that's what we have here. It's just on a little stand. And then I also have a softbox that's really close to this cabbage. You can see that it is just a couple of inches away from our cabbage. And I'm doing that because I want drastic light fall off using the inverse square law. And we can look over here at this camera angle to see uh, how close this is um, to our, our cabbage. And you can see also we have a lot of room above the cabbage here, and that will come into effect in a second. Now, what you can't see with these angles is really the relationship between the cabbage and our softbox. So let's take a look at our overhead camera. And so on our overhead camera, you can see that this light is really, really close to our cabbage, but it's actually in front of the cabbage. And what that allows us to do is, uh, because we have so much light coming over here, it just falls around the cabbage, and it also keeps that off the duvetine. And so that's what we're doing here. And because we have a lot of height above our camera, the camera position doesn't really affect any of the light falling on the cabbage. It's just coming all around. And so that's what you want to do. You want to keep this light in front so you don't have a lot of light falling on the back of the duvetine. Well, the other thing we're doing here is I'm tethering my camera to my laptop. So I have my laptop over here. I have uh, Lightroom 5 uh, on uh, tethered capture setup. And so what I'm doing is I'm really capturing everything right here and triggering my camera remotely. And I'm doing that because I really want to make sure that I'm capturing everything absolutely in focus. I'm looking at the composition and I want to play a little bit with my post processing as I'm bringing things in to make sure I really dial it in. So let me shoot a few pictures of this cabbage and then we'll talk a little bit about the post production here in my Lightroom 5 software. So the key here is to work deliberately and slowly. So I have my lens in manual focus, and because I can't really uh, crouch down here, I'm not supposed to do that with this brace on. I'm actually going to unplug from my tether so I can use live view. Then I can look right in live view and make sure everything's in focus, and once it's all set up and I've got everything dialed in, then I'll plug this back in and I'll start firing that from my laptop. Well, I'm using manual focus on my camera um, to make sure that I have it exactly focused where I want. And then I'm just going to trigger this over here using my tethered capture. Now, one of the things that I'm doing here is I have my camera set to uh, vertical uh, or portrait mode. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to rotate this cabbage from vertical to horizontal. I think that'll look better. But I want to use all of the resolution that my camera has. And so I'm shooting vertical. So when I rotate that, I have all the pixels that I possibly can use in use. And so that will work just fine. So let me keep shooting and then we'll do the post-production next.
All right, well, let's take a look at the end result of where we're headed with this cabbage. Now, here's the picture that I've already done some editing on before I started shooting, just so I knew exactly where I was headed with this. But let me show you how I got there. So I'm gonna go into my uh, Lightroom 5, and this is the uh, one of the shots that I just did. It's this vertical shot of the cabbage that's right behind me. Now, remember, I said I wanted to have a horizontal shot, but I shot it vertically so that I could fill the entire frame. So if I go back here and show you um, up here, you can see here's a, a horizontal shot where I didn't fill the entire frame. And so there's all this information on the left and the right that we could be filling with pixels. And so that's why uh, I shot that vertically so I could get as much as possible in that frame. Now what I want to do is I want to roll that over. And so I can do that right in the library module. And you can see that there are these little arrows right here on the right and left hand side. And what I can do is I can click this and it rotates that cabbage. And so that's the first step. I'm going to rotate that. And so it's a horizontal shot. Then I'm going to jump into the develop module of Lightroom 5. Now you can do this with Lightroom 4 as well or in Photoshop. But what I really want to do is I want to start working with the uh, levels of black and uh, my shadows and midtones. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick everything out. I'm going to hit uh, Shift F to get this to be a full screen. And then I'm going to hit Shift Tab to kick out the sides and then just bring in this right panel here. Now up in the, uh, up in the histogram here, there's this little uh, arrow right here. And if I click on that, anything that's absolutely black is gonna show up in blue. And I want everything outside of this cabbage to be as much as, uh, as, much as possible absolutely black. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull in my blacks. So I'm gonna pull that in so I get that almost exactly everything as dark as possible. So I want everything to be blue outside of that. There's some stuff here that I'm gonna have to clean up uh, in Photoshop or maybe just with an exposure brush later. Then I can turn that off by clicking that little triangle. And now we have um, our black levels set. So we have black, absolutely black, and we've gotten rid of everything. There's no detail in any of those areas that were blue. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna work with this in a very desaturated mode. I don't wanna put it in black and white because I wanna bring in hints of color here and there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my saturation way down. So I've done that. So my saturation here you can see is negative 73. So I've really brought that down here. Um, and once I do that, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up my clarity. And what the clarity slider is gonna do is gonna give me a little bit more contrast. So I'll do that. And now this is starting to look a little bit more uh, the way that we want it to look. The other thing I can do here is I can play with the highlights and shadows. So I can bring those down just a little bit. I can open up the shadows. So play with these at your leisure. What we're trying to accomplish here is we're trying to really bring out all of the form of whatever you're shooting. If it's a head of uh, cabbage or if it's a bell pepper or whatever you're gonna be shooting, um, you really wanna be able to show all the details in the shadows and show how that light is falling, how we wrap that around. If you look and we can zoom in here, you can start to see that we're really getting some dark shadows here. We're seeing all the details in the lettuce or in the cabbage and you can see everything else is falling into complete darkness, which we really, really like. Now the other thing we might want to do is do some split toning. So if we can go down here, there is this little section called split toning here. And if we wanna add a color cast to this, maybe make it a little bit sepia or brown or a little bit blue, what we can do is this top slider here is for the highlights, so I can make it, uh, let's make it into the browns right here. And then I can bring that saturation in. And what we'll do here is I'll uh, pull out so you can actually see that uh, wherever I have this set, those are my highlights are gonna be set. So I want this to be around this and choose the brown. See, I've got this set to a, a more of a brown. And then in the shadows, I wanna do the same thing. I wanna put that more into the, the darker browns. And so I've got this sort of uh, look here that I can play with, bring it up, bring it down. I can do some different things. And you can just season this to taste. Really what we're trying to do is bring out that form, bring out the texture of this. And so we have that right there. And then from here, we can jump into Photoshop if we need to, we can do some uh, sharpening techniques. We can use a high pass filter or whatever to really make this pop. But those are the, the high level steps to get this to where you want it to be. And you can look uh, back here. So this is the one I just did really quickly. There's the one I showed you from the start. So I did a little bit uh, different split toning there. And then from here, what you can do is you can take this 
and then you can make a really large print or maybe you can do some compositing. You can do all kinds of things from this starting point. This is something that I think needs a lot of work, this cabbage. I think it needs to have some, uh, maybe some different angles. I don't like this really strong line here. But the point is to set something up and to start playing with it and to see what you can make out of different textures. And that's what we're gonna do next. Now that we sort of have this dialed in, we know the settings that we want to use. All we have to do in Lightroom now is in the uh, library module, if I have, let's say, this cabbage here that I like, the one I just used, I can take this first cabbage, I can select the second cabbage, and then I can go down here to sync settings and click that and just tell Lightroom to synchronize everything. And then what happens is all of those settings are synced, and so I can just make sure that all of the different things that I do look similar. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna uh, add some bell peppers and some other chilies and some things like that. We're gonna start shooting those. And then we'll show you a little montage of the different things that we created. And the challenge for you is to set something up that's very similar to this. Just use a very simple dark background. If you can get duvetine, grab that. Get a really nice soft light as close as you can to your subject. Play with the positioning of that a little bit to see how it casts shadows and light across your subject. And then dive in and see what you can make. And we want to see those results. So when I'm shooting this, I'm not getting enough light on the opposite side of the softbox. And so instead of putting a fancy reflector up there, I'm just going to use my hand. It's going to be plenty of reflection. So I'm going to bring it in as close as I can without getting in the shot. I'll take a couple of these at different angles. It's a hand reflector. It works just fine. Well, that's what I was able to do in an afternoon in the studio, just playing around with a single light that's a really nice soft light, really close to my subject with a dark background. Now, if you don't have this exact same setup, don't worry. You can use whatever dark background you have. You could perhaps use a black wall or some uh, construction paper. If you've got velvet, use that or just some black cloth, whatever works. Uh, just throw it up there and try it out. Also, if you don't have a studio light, you could use a speed light in an umbrella or a soft box and that will work just fine as well. Just make sure you get it really nice and close so you get that nice soft wraparound light and dramatic light fall off and so you can really pull out the form of whatever it is that you're shooting and then do some post-production and you will be happy with the results that you shot. Well, thank you so much for joining me this week on Exploring Photography. Don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV so you don't miss a single episode. And to check out the gear that we use in this episode, make sure you look at the comments if you're watching us on YouTube or go to the Adorama Learning Center to see links to all of the gear that we're using and reviews on everything that we've used. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you again next time. Mm. I think it's enough. <laughs>